Anything can be art. And I'll tell you exactly what this thing is in a minute. So going back to the first thing that I said, anything can be art. And actually, everything is art. I mean, things like drawings, paintings, movies, sculptures, woodworking, we all agree that those things are art. But why I say anything can be art is because at some level, it can be. At least I think so. Plumbing, at its highest level, is an art. Playing video games can be an art. Hell, if you're the greatest in the world at breaking wind, even that can be an art. After all, you can't spell flatulence without art. Well, at least not without the A and the T. Well, and I guess the R too. If you look at the end, there's kind of like an R hidden in there. Anyway, so why am I going on and on about art? Because in this video, I'm building a stand for my headphones. And because for my money, music is the greatest art. Now, ironically, this video might actually end up having the worst music since my buddy Chris, who normally does the music for these videos, isn't available since he just became a dad, so I'm going to do it on my own. First, I should say that I came up with three basic design ideas for the stand, each with a few alternative versions. Of the designs, the profile of this one spoke to me the most, so I decided this was the one that I would refine. I really liked the look of it from the side, but from the front it looked a little too clunky so I decided I would have it taper towards the top. Here I'm marking out the taper on my wood. I don't really have an angle in mind. I'm just having it go from three inches wide at the bottom to an inch and a half at the top. I really need to build or get a tapering jig. I just haven't had the time. But this piece was kind of small, so I was still able to get the cut I needed. Basically, I lined my marks up with the slots on my table saw so that I knew that the angle of the line I had drawn was parallel to the blade. Then I held the piece down so it wouldn't move, and I matched the angle of the back of my piece using my miter gauge, then locked down the miter gauge so I could consistently cut that angle. Then I just had to clamp the workpiece to the miter gauge and make the cut. Probably not the safest or best way to do it, but it works in a pinch. In addition to the two taper cuts, this piece also needed miter cuts on either end. This was kind of tricky because I didn't want to cut them before the tapers, since that would have made clamping the piece to the miter gauge really tough and I couldn't easily cut them after the taper because then you'd be dealing with matching up a bunch of compound angles and it would be nearly impossible to get them just right. So what I did was take the off cuts from when I made the tapers and kind of clamp the whole thing back together so that I could make the miter cuts just as if the piece were still a rectangle. Again, not the world's most precise cut, but close enough for what I'm trying to accomplish. In hindsight, if I were to build this again, or if you build this, I would recommend drawing out your tapers, making your miter cuts on the ends, then moving over to the bandsaw, if you have one, and cutting the tapers there. It isn't quite as precise, but it would be good enough, and way easier and safer probably. Back to the miters. There are two different angles to cut. Basically, the vertical portion is 15 degrees off of 90. So each place where the miters meet, there will be one angle that is cut at 37 and a half degrees, and another angle that is cut at 52 and a half degrees. That's what gives it that lean. There's a trick for doing this that totally takes dialing in an accurate angle out of the equation, and I actually do these types of cuts fairly often. So rather than going over it here, I made a video that goes over it in detail. There's a link in the description. Just want to take a second to say thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and particularly Ray who just joined up. If you don't know what Patreon is, I'd encourage you to take a second to check it out. I'll put a link at the end of the video, and no pressure. Next I marked out the remaining cuts that would need to be made on the two shorter pieces. The, I don't know, foot and head for lack of a better term. As you saw in the last couple of shots, I've already cut the mitered edge where they will join the vertical piece, or the torso I suppose if we're going to keep running with that analogy. So based off of those cuts I marked my total length and the angle of the taper that would be needed. Then on my table saw I cut the pieces that are finished length. And on the band saw I cut the tapers. I stayed a bit proud of my line so that I could finish and clean it up over on the edge sander. Next, while the piece is still rectangular on what will eventually be the top surface, I cut a really shallow dado to act as a sort of resting place for my headphones. 
I'm pretty sure this part isn't necessary, but I went ahead and did it anyway. I also made it overly wide to accommodate other headphones that I might own down the road. And finally I had to set my blade so that I could cut a little angle on the foot and the headpiece to match the long taper that we had cut on the torso a couple minutes ago. Again, I don't know what that angle is, probably something like, I don't know, three and a half degrees, but I just eyeballed it by holding the torso piece vertically against the blade and tilting it until it looked about right. I'll leave the head and the foot piece a little bit wider than the torso so that I can sand everything flush after it's glued up. Speaking of gluing up, here's a little pro tip. If you're ever filming a glue up, make sure you don't reveal anything. You want to hide the action behind your hand. The imagination is a very powerful thing, and I'm sure whatever you're imagining is going on behind my hand right now is much sexier than what is actually happening. See? If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's just right down there below the video window. And if you have, thank you. And how about a like? It doesn't cost you anything, and it makes a YouTube god smile. Normally at the end of these videos, I always try to come up with something witty or profound to say to kind of close it out, but I'm pretty sure this isn't the last video that I'm going to do that's about music, so I'm going to kind of spare myself from the pressure of doing that this time. And instead I'll just say this. Alright you guys, ready? One, two, one, two.